hold up, wait a minute. Isn't there like a Newtonian law or something that says quarterly revenue can only go higher with Celsius energy drinks? So I'll decode that introductory statement or question very soon within this content, but as I normally do with my quarterly financial content of publicly traded functional CBG brands, I will use the recently filed earnings report, notes I took from listening to the earnings conference call, and any relevant publicly disclosed news. In this case, it's the 2024 quarter three period ending September 30th of 2024 for Celsius Holdings to obviously update you on the performance of Celsius energy drinks, but also use it as the backdrop to discuss market insights within the broader energy beverage category. That being said, let's start with a quick financial update to set the foundation. In the third quarter, Celsius Holdings had revenue of $265.7 million, which was down 31% year over year. Can you guess? which quarter was the last period that Celsius Holdings had negative year-over-year -year revenue growth. Maybe pause the video for a moment and guess in the comments section before I disclose it. Okay, did you guess? Believe it or not, the last time Celsius Holdings had negative year-over-year -year revenue growth was in the first quarter of 2016 when the energy drink brand was generating around $4 million in quarterly revenue. So yes, this is a bit of a big deal. Or is it? Before I provide my strategic commentary around that question, let's finish out this sales and revenue section. So on a quarter over quarter sequential basis, revenue was down by slightly more than half. Yet, if we look at the revenue performance over the first nine months of 2024, Celsius Holdings generated slightly more than $1 billion in revenue, which was up 5% year over year. Breaking out the quarterly revenue geographically, North American sales were $247.1 million, which was down 33% year over year. This negative result was attributed primarily to inventory optimization by PepsiCo. And while I don't create quarterly earnings content on PepsiCo, I do pay close attention to the reports and conference calls. So it wasn't much of a surprise that PepsiCo would be focusing on tightly managing its costs to better align with the subdued growth environment but Celsius Holdings leadership does believe PepsiCo inventory has mostly stabilized, and more importantly, that its cost optimization activity did not impact customer sales at the retail level. On the international side, Celsius had quarterly revenue of $18.6 million, which was up 37% year over year. This growth was driven in large part by ongoing velocity improvements and increased brand awareness. Though Celsius is seeing year-over-year -year international revenue growth, currently it hasn't always been smooth sailing for the energy drink brand. That relatively weak performance was due in part to internal decision-making a few years ago, as Celsius leadership smartly focused its attention and resources on fueling the insane growth within the domestic market. But that's starting to change inside Celsius, as the brand believes this is one of the most important strategic pillars presenting significant opportunity for incremental growth over the next three to five years. And you can already see some of the early international market development groundwork starting to formalize. In the third quarter, Celsius began sales activity in Australia and New Zealand through major national retailers. Additionally, sales performance in the UK and Ireland continued to exceed initial expectations. Finally, sales and distribution activity in Canada under the PepsiCo umbrella began in January with Celsius leadership noting that performance has continued to exceed the company's initial expectations and they've begun to introduce additional flavors. But based on those learnings, along with emulating the Monster Energy and Coca-Cola international structures, the Celsius and PepsiCo partnership will look for further global expansion opportunities. Speaking of Monster Energy, the international revenue portion of their business is around 40% of its total and it's outpacing the US market in growth rates. The Celsius international revenue only accounts for about 5% of the total in 2024. So as you can see, there's tons of long-term runway left, even if comparing these are like apples and oranges for several strategic reasons. Now, let's dive deeper into some retail sales and distribution updates that I think are important when trying to understand the Celsius energy drink story. And I probably don't need to keep mentioning this, but just in case, 
things drastically shifted because of the August 2022 distribution and investment deal with PepsiCo. The entire DSD distributor transition was completed by 2022 year end and Celsius has now also been fully integrated within PepsiCo's annual planning cycle. In terms of retail consumption growth, Circana retail data for the period ending September 29th of 2024 shows that Celsius grew 7.1% year over year over the last 13 weeks. Additionally, Celsius contributed to 16% of all energy drink category growth year over year in the third quarter of 2024. Moreover, according to Circana all track channel data for the quarterly period ending September 29th of 2024, Celsius is now securely the third largest energy drink brand in the category with its market share growing slightly year over year to 11.8%. And I keep saying this, but I'd hate to gloss over that accomplishment as this is the first time in over a decade that an energy drink brand not named Red Bull or Monster Energy has had a 10% share in the US market. But how can Celsius possibly push even further, maybe towards a 15% share? And I know that maybe sounds a bit crazy, but it's important to realize that there are more than a dozen large US markets where Celsius is plus or minus two points of a 15 point share. So it really comes down to one, increasing sales velocities, which have been consistently going up, and two, increasing total distribution points, which is comprised of ACV and items per store. PepsiCo continues to facilitate ACV expansion for Celsius, supporting new customer acquisitions across broad demographics and new usage occasions, but honestly, the energy drink brand is basically at full distribution now. So beyond the velocity element, TDP growth will have to come from increased items carried per store. Going forward, Celsius will increase items per store through a combination of product strategies like flavor, format, pack size, and variant expansion. Finally, the company will seek more store placements like leveraging cold display activity in Celsius branded coolers as this strategy, especially locating them near checkouts, has proven to be highly effective with impulse purchases. Next, I want to move on to a trio of non-track channels that continue to play an outsized role in the Celsius story. And I'll start with e-commerce. So here's the deal. You don't make money selling heavy ass beverages online at a per unit price points that have any semblance of parity to sales channels like mass, grocery, or convenience. But I still believe, especially Amazon, is an extremely important part of the future of beverage and having a long-term integrated sales channel strategy needs to be centered around it. That statement wasn't pointed towards Celsius because they really have shown through strategic actions that they agree with my statement. But I see too few energy drink brands leveraging Amazon at the right pace and cadence within their broader sales channel strategy. In this quarter, Celsius reported generating around $27 million in revenue on the Amazon marketplace, which was up 21% year over year. According to Stackline data for the last 13 weeks ending October 5th of 2024, Celsius had a 20.4% market share on Amazon. Another non-track sales channel I wanted to highlight was food service. Celsius is seeing a long runway of growth opportunities in the food service channel as they've been able to expand rapidly into thousands of colleges, hospitals, at work, micro markets, and restaurant locations in the United States. During the third quarter, 12.3% of the energy drink brand's revenue that comes from PepsiCo came from food service. And Celsius leadership specifically called out the lodging and restaurant points of distribution, which were up 46% and 27% year over year respectively. And then the last of the non-tracked channels I wanted to highlight are wholesale clubs. During the third quarter, Celsius sold $60.5 million in energy drinks through the entire club channel, which is down 4% year over year. If you look at performance by wholesale club brand, Costco increased 15% year over year, but Sam's Club and BJ's were negatively affected due to the timing of promotions and previous year's innovation loaded. But over the last few years, I've shared the performance in these various non-track channels because yes, they've played an outsized role in the Celsius story, but more importantly, because I was trying to really show how energy drink consumers have evolved their shopping patterns. Yes, convenience stores still have the largest share of energy drink sales, but brands need to adjust, especially because I don't believe the increased buying within wholesale clubs, 
or online is simply a weak consumer data story. Now, I'm sure that many consumers are buying more in bulk because of the better value per can, but that's not the only reason, as the great shutdown period changed shopping patterns likely forever within the category. And that's partly why I believe Celsius began referencing Circana's new Mulo Plus with convenience data that captures online retailers and wholesale clubs because it's a better representation of the marketplace. But for this final part of the content, let's shift into a discussion around a collection of categorical acquisitions that directly and indirectly impacted Celsius Holdings. And let's start with the recent news that Celsius acquired Big Beverages contract manufacturing the strategic transaction provides Celsius with a 170,000 square foot modern manufacturing and warehouse facility that is expected to provide greater supply chain control, quicker innovation cycles, and greater production flexibility. The facility was already principally dedicated to the contract manufacturing of Celsius, but provides the option to add capacity as the business scales further and should help further optimize the Celsius contract manufacturing orbit model. And with the U.S. energy drinks market being bigger than ever right now from a total retail sales point of view, but also the competition within the category having never been greater before right now, Celsius Holdings could intelligently leverage that new manufacturing asset to increase customer intimacy through a strategy that I created called Creatively Small. Here's a clip from a piece of content that I did 18 months ago where I essentially outlined this bold, distinct strategy. It effectively takes the natural tendency of CPG entrepreneurs to launch more and more products, turns it on its head, and makes it a more enriching strategy for customer intimacy purposes. While launch-happy CPG entrepreneurs once had a credible strategy, today's ultra-competitive market limits the value generation from that activity. Now, this doesn't mean that CPG brands should seize product innovation or new launches, but it does suggest that anything new should have a clear reason for existence. Creatively Small has a threefold reason for existence. Firstly, because the CPG brand will produce a small quantity, it provides a scarcity mechanism that will excite longtime customers that remember the days they knew about the brand before it got popular. These small batches will be sold through its direct consumer website to give that kind of Disneyland shopping experience and marketed through insider channels that make customers that were able to attain those small batches feel special. Secondly, these small batches will give the CPG brand the chance to experiment with new flavors, product formulation variants, or entirely new formats. Since the distribution will be controlled, it will give the CPG brand the feedback loops it needs to consider iterative innovations or to green light full-scale new product development. And then thirdly, the creatively small strategy provides a unique partnership platform that can capitalize on new product trends that might be in adjacent but complementary categories or give the CPG brand a purpose-driven mechanism, both of which would create customer intimacy. But then in terms of categorical acquisitions that indirectly impact Celsius Holdings, the big one was obviously the recent Keurig Dr. Pepper and Ghost deal in the hands of KDP. Ghost becomes an even larger competitive threat to Celsius. And then you combine C4 Energy and Ghost, KDP becomes an even larger competitive threat to the PepsiCo energy drinks business. Celsius still has ample sales and marketing leverage to pull, and its core products continue to resonate with buyers. But categorical growth rates have slowed compared to the last handful of years, and macroeconomic factors have been pressuring same-store sales of the largest convenience store retail chains. So does that create a situation where PepsiCo could again have wandering eyes? Even though Celsius just recently renegotiated but also strengthened its contract with PepsiCo, in this kind of PepsiCo if then hypothetical situation, the only important categorical name that makes sense is Alani New, even though I'd argue that would be a huge negative for Celsius holdings if it happened. But shifting back to reality, the other recent categorical acquisition that indirectly impacts Celsius Holdings is that Molson Coors acquired Zoa Energy. But don't get it twisted, these two acquisitions are not in the same league and shouldn't be combined in a manner that makes you believe that they are somehow connected. I merely mentioned the latter transaction because one, it's newsworthy, two, 
It supports that large corporations believe the energy drinks category has massive upside potential to continue growing. And three, signals that the better for you and or performance energy and fitness lifestyle positioning strategy has a lot of tailwinds behind it. In fact, the U.S. energy drinks market retail sales are now majority made up of sugar-free products, marking the first time in the category's history. So maybe now the legacy media can stop the bullshit propaganda that all energy drinks are these caffeinated, flavored, carbonated sugar waters. But I hope you enjoyed the first principles thinking that went into my latest YouTube video. If you did, can you do me a favor by hitting that like button? That quick and free action helps YouTube know my content is worth spreading to more people. Also, we're getting really close to reaching my next subscriber goal, and it would be great if you join me on this journey. But to do that, we need to fix the fact that slightly more than three-fourths of you that are watching this video right now are not subscribed to my YouTube channel, and that hurts my feelings. Regardless, I want to thank you for giving me some of your attention and time, and I'll see you on the next one.